so uh, apparently people have wanted to, someone to talk about Shiny for a while, so I mentioned that I would talk about it. Like, oh yeah, first one question. Uh, so I, I am Tom Raymond. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the Shiny API now. Before I talk about it, I always like ask, has anyone used it before? <laughs> has anyone used it more than me? Probably all of you. So. <laughs> um, so I've used it just a little bit. So this is a very high level. I have like um, 20 minutes or so to talk about this. I'm only a little time for questions. So uh, in 20 minutes, I'm not going to be able to be like, this is everything about this whole shiny thing. It's a whole package that's being published by the same guys who publish uh, our studio. So this is intended to be like a sort of very high level, maybe you've never used it before, maybe you've used it once, you want to know a little bit more about how it works. And I have a very simple working example um, that I'll show, and we'll do the, show a little bit of the code as well. Uh, the working example is going to be publicly available, it's on my GitHub page, um, and there's a link to it, and the slides will be available. And everything is available, it's all MIT licensed or something. <laughs> Point is, you help yourself when the time comes. Uh, really quick, I mentioned that, I'm Tom Ring. Um, I went to Case Western here in Cleveland. I'm a native, so I was born and raised in Brunswick. Uh, I went there, I got a bachelor's in philosophy, a master's in bioethics, and a master's in public health. Um, and then I went on and got a certificate at Penn State through their uh, online program in applied statistics. Uh, so if anyone ever needs recommendations for like a decent online program where you actually learn things, I can vouch for Penn State because it's like a real program and I actually learned a lot about statistics. Uh, so it's not just sort of a, a box checking exercise. Um, I worked at the Cleveland Clinic for two years right after I graduated. Uh, and I spent the last three years before, sort of presently, uh, I was at uh, Case Western, I was doing clinical data management. Uh, and I'm now a principal data scientist for a company in uh, Madison, Wisconsin called Ford Health Group. Uh, so it's in Madison, Wisconsin, which means unfortunately this is my last uh, Cleveland R user group meeting because next month I'm moving <laughs> to Madison, Wisconsin. I've been working with them since uh, February, full time, but remotely. Uh, so I'll have to get involved with their R user group, but I'll probably think you guys once in a while and be like, hey, I'm going to be a fan. So why use Shiny? Um, so some of you have used Shiny, so why do you guys use Shiny? What do you use it for? I build an app at work for um, uh, camp marketing campaign sizing and, and forecast. Sure. So non-technical people need to use it and kind of be able to do stuff? Yeah. Right. Okay. Other reasons you might want to use it? I just searched because I was like, this is neat. But um, <laughs> so I expanded into doing rapid prototyping of sort of what you might call BI dashboards. It was kind of like that. Um, I was like, hey, we should do this thing. And then the overworked dev team at my company would be like, well, okay, but we have one developer, so that's going to take like nine months. And I'm like, well, okay, we don't want to do it. And then nine months later, be like, well, we really don't want it to look like this. We want it to look like that. So you can rapidly show them, okay, this is what I'm thinking by building it in Shiny. And then once you get it the way you want it, hand it off and have it built permanently if that's something that you want. Um, so a couple things that I just mentioned, dynamic reporting in lieu of 100 page documents. I used to like, produce a lot of 100 plus page PDF files as a clinical data manager because they'd be like, oh, we want to see all the patients. I'm like, there's 400 patients at 13 time points in your study. Well, well we want to see them all, so all right. <laughs> it's just a bunch of for loops. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, prototyping. And then um, the other thing I always mention is exploring data. Um, it's a lot easier to explore data when you can do it visually. And if you can build a simple shiny app that does it for you, and it lets you sort of go in there and move sliders around and just see how things look different, it's actually really powerful because there's this there's this disconnect when you do it using normal what I would call sort of normal methods, which is I write some code, I get some plots, I look at the plots, okay, I want to look more at this, so I switch back and I write, and I change my code or I write more code, and I run it and I look at the plots again, and then I change it, and there's this disconnect because you have to switch mindsets from visual interpretation of data to code monkey R person, <laughs> then back to visual interpretation of data. It's much more sort of natural if you can build the app that lets you make those changes without having to switch gears. Now, of course it takes some code to do that originally, so it's not sort of a silver bullet or anything, but it, it's, it's a lot easier when you're sort of, I call it flying through the data, being able to sort of pull out pull back in, pull out, look at different parts of it. So how does Shiny work? So this is the mystery that I, took me like several weeks to discover at first. But basically what it comes down to is there's two R files in every Shiny application. The first one is UI.R. Um, and 
And as you might imagine, it contains the user interface code. Then the other one is server.r, and it contains the code that processes inputs and creates outputs. So the trick is server.r is your workhorse that does everything. Um, UI.r just controls how the stuff comes out and how you interact with it. Um, so they're big on reactive frameworks, and this is, I'm pretty sure, a term of art that's not just like shiny based. So someone in here is going to be like, well, I know all about reactive frameworks. And I'm, so apologies to that person who probably knows a lot more. <laughs> this is my horrifying simplification of reactive framework. So you start out with UI.r and server.r. And I know I took a picture of like a server cabinet and of a screen. But in reality, these are just two files that sit in the same directory uh, for your application. So there's no actual trans computing. Like, it doesn't go from one computer to the other. Those are just the nomenclature. Uh, so essentially, what a reactive framework is in this context is that when you change the inputs that are in UI.r, the server recalculates everything and gives you updated output. So not exactly a mind-shattering you know, difference here, but what, the core of it essentially is that your shiny inputs are your inputs that lets you say, like, show me a histogram and then change the size of the bars, right? So how would we do that normally? Well, we would just change that variable in the call to bar plot, you know? We want to change the color of the lines, but we change the call to plot, and we change the color argument. So the idea is that input comes from UI.R and can change those things. And any time your application detects that those are changed, it redoes everything on the back end and produces new output. So it's called reactive because it reacts to new inputs. You don't have to, like, say, click a button. Now, there is an option to click a button. I'm not going to lie. I've never gotten it to work yet. So, so, so you can't click a button as far as I know. But uh, there is actually a way for you to do that. But the idea is you don't have to. Instead, you just build the app, and it responds dynamically to new inputs. So there's core functions I want to talk about. There's two of them because there's two files, UI.R and server.r. Uh, shiny server, I mentioned the server is very important, the powerhouse of your app. Um, shiny server accepts inputs, produces new outputs. There are two objects that are sort of reserved in shiny. They're literally called input and output. Um, and I'm not, I'm going to say they're lists because I'm pretty sure they're lists, but they might be some kind of weird like, I don't know. <laughs> um, they might be some weird type. Uh, but essentially, you can assign things to them using the, uh, you know, the money sign operator like you do with most R functions. You'll see a little bit of that in the code. So essentially, if you have inputs coming from Shiny UI, they're accessible inside, your, uh, inside these functions if you call input and then you know, the dollar sign and then whatever the variable name is. Same way, if you're in server and you want to assign outputs, you do output, the dollar sign, whatever you want to name the output becomes available. So input and output are the two objects that control the flow of your data. And not, sort of not just your data, but also your basically your inputs and your outputs. Shiny server does all the math, for lack of a better word. Shiny UI is how you lay it out and make it look nice. This is super small, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But basically, these are the two side by side. Your code uses inputs, so you get them from, as I mentioned, input, dollar sign, whatever you want to call it. Your code makes a plot, so it assigns output, dollar sign, plot, with one of the reactive functions like render plot. Over in the UI, your code's going to gather the inputs, like, you know, select input, you're calling it active, let's say. Let's say it's the site that's active. And your code is going to display a plot, so you're going to plot output, and then just the name of whatever you named it, in this case, the super descriptive plot. Uh, you can name it much more sort of extensively if you'd like. I threw this up here because I kept getting this error and it was super frustrating, um, and so I felt that all new shiny users should know about it. Uh, so the little orange ways, I put it up the way it appears, but this is the text. Operation not allowed without a rea active reactive context. You try to do something that can only be done from inside a reactive expression or observer. So when you start out, you're like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> Uh, and if you search for it online, there's like, there's actually a really, really good shiny tutorial, but like most people who sort of learned R about doing, I was like, I don't need that tutorial, I'll just go do it myself. Um, so I'm sure if I had done the tutorial originally, it might have helped me actually like know what this means. But essentially what it comes down to is within shiny server and shiny UI, everything you do has to be within the context of what they call a reactive expression. Now these are functions that they provide with shiny, and I'm pretty sure you can write your own. But what it comes down to is, 
yeah, let me just show the example because it makes more sense this way. So here's my shiny server. Let's say I have a data frame and I want those with x that are less than 5. So I try to do that and then I'm going to just print that data table. So if you do this, it's not going to work. Right? And that's because that data assignment, df, you know, all that stuff that is above the output line is not within a reactive expression. It means it doesn't know how to do that. Right? Because within the server function, you have to do things within a reactive expression. The reactive expression part of this is render data tape. That is a reactive expression. That's a reactive expression because in the context, if you change the inputs, it recalculates and change the outputs. So all you have to do to make that error go away, put the subsetting inside of render data table. This will work fine. The other one will break. I know this for a fact. I actually tested it last night because I was like, I'm going to make sure that I can reproduce this mistake. And that's exactly what I did. You change it and it works. So the idea is that within Shiny server, everything you do has to be within, with, within one of these reactive expressions that are packaged with Shiny. So within render data table or within render plot. Um, so the thing that is important to remember is that every time the inputs change, the outputs get recalculated. So if you have static calculations that take time, don't put them inside render anything. Because every time the inputs change, it'll run everything. That's inside that. So if you have, say, static subsetting that takes 30 seconds to run, just run it once completely outside of the shiny server function. Put it up here in your code. Because then it'll just run when the application starts. It won't run again. Only put things inside of the expressions, the reactive expressions, when you actually need them to run on a new input. Otherwise, you're just kind of wasting cycles. So, example, I mentioned this, but that's my URL and it'll be published. But the code's available. Feel free to go on it and play with it. So I'm going to run a quick, totally uh, just made up the, uh, it's not real data, basically, is what it comes down to. Um, so this is a very quick, doesn't quite fit on the screen, very quick application that I wrote that essentially is supposed to serve as comparing different clinics. Bear with me while I just slightly negotiate the size here. There we go. So unfortunately, because of sort of the very pinkness of this, you can't totally tell the colors. But essentially what you can do is pick a, a clinic and a measure here. This is hemoglobin A1C. Um, and you can basically get a plot of the mean and whatever clinics you've picked. So in this case, you can pick between four fake clinics at East Jonestown and Robertsville. So unfortunately, I chose gray, so you can't see the gray mean line, but there's a mean line in there, and the mean line is being calculated every time you change the inputs. Similarly, you can switch, I also have fake body mass indexes, as well as fake hemoglobin A1Cs. So the idea is simple, this is a display function, you just be able to look at things easily. Um, we actually do something kind of similar internally at my company, which is what I kind of was inspired by to do this one. So really quick. And I'm not going to belabor all of the code because obviously it'll take some, some time for you to look at it yourself. As I mentioned, Shiny Server and Shiny UI are the two functions that you need to be concerned with. So essentially, and I'm not going to go into all the code because you can read it. It's basically just me making the plots look nice. <laughs> uh, but the, the core thing here is within Shiny Server, the first argument is literally a function. Right? And that function takes input and output. Output is that object that contains outputs that you can pass to the UI to display. Input is the object that contains inputs from the UI. So in this case, I'm making a historical data plot using render plot. If you scroll down through render plot, and I'll leave it to, uh, you know, we won't go through every line, but essentially you'll see that what I'm doing is making a plot, right, and having some choices that lets you, you know, have colors and things like that, but it's essentially our code that you would use in any context. You would just use it. You would write the code you'd write to make a plot anyways, and then you just essentially take things that are static and replace them with the inputs from the UI. And then you just essentially wrap that all into Shiny, and it will display the output for you. And there's a whole line here about how I, you can see how I added the you know, lines to the plot and everything. So the other aspect of this is the UI, as I mentioned. And so essentially what you're seeing 
the whole UI file is, this is two thirds of it right here. It's essentially saying there's a title panel, then there's a sidebar with inputs, two inputs where you select, and there's a variety of options. Um, I just use plain select, but there's sliders and there's all kinds of text input. There's many different things that you can choose from. Um, and you basically, they're well documented, so essentially you, you want to display a checkbox, you pick up the checkbox one and there's all kinds of options. Uh, if you want to, in my case, display a select input where you select the clinics, uh, the main thing to sort of that's useful to know is that whatever you use a name vector, whatever you put the names as is what's going to show up, and whatever you put on the other side is what's going to be passed as the argument. So when you pick Oak Bridge, it actually sends OB as the uh, input. And then main panel, just the output. And all you have to do is say plot output and the name of the output. So you remember in the other one, I assigned historical plot, historical data plot was assigned to be the output of the plot. Here I just say, hey, plot that output. It looks for it, finds it, puts it on the screen, that's all you have to do. So there's no like UI programming in the sense of you don't know, like I don't know any JavaScript. <laughs> um, you know, I know like this much Java and no JavaScript. Um, and so I didn't need to know any of that. I was able to just roll with what Shiny does. So, so obviously, take some time when you have a chance to review it in a little bit greater depth. But this is sort of, like I said, the 5,000 foot view of like, this is how it kind of works. Um, but really, once you start playing with it, the sky is kind of the limit. Uh, it obviously works better with you know structured data, but if you're creative, you can program around almost any kind of non-structured. So, uh, I think I left some time for a couple questions. I don't want to take up too much because I know there's another speaker, but you won't have as mixed. Does anyone have a really good question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, does Shiny still provide you with a free personal use Shiny server account? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So there's two. There's now Shiny like um, I can't remember exactly. It's called. It's basically like corporate like use Shiny, um, and that's uh, like, I think ten thousand dollars a year now for. But that's for sort of like increased uptime. And it, the main difference in it, as far as I can tell, is the number of they call them seats or like users, but it's not what you or I would think of as a user because essentially. When I say user, like one user can use this app at a time, you would think like, okay, one person can go on the website and see it. Um, what they actually mean is one R session can connect to the website. So you could presumably have multiple people viewing it. Um, and they say as much on their website. So you can get away with a lot on the free account is basically what it comes down to. Um, because their, their sort of their model of what it can do is, is a little sort of, it sounds like you'd be very limited, but I'm pretty sure you're not. Um, I will say it, it tends to chug after a while if you're doing a lot of data stuff behind the scenes, which is why I mentioned don't put unnecessary operations inside the reactive frameworks because then anytime anything changes, it's like, it takes a second or two for it to do. Um, so it kind of, it came out, the shiny corporate license or commercial license came out sort of in tandem with our studio now has a sort of professional edition that you can subscribe to. Any other questions? It's limited to 25 hours a month for the free. 25 hours a month? That's what I thought. So you can have users looking at your dev stuff and changing it up to 25 hours a month. I think, I think that's the uh, Shiny Apps account that's like published on their server. Right, right, right. when you publish on their server. Right, exactly. So if you want to use the, and I, and I didn't touch on that at all because I never used it, but right, you can publish your apps through Shiny, but right, it's kind of like uh, Amazon's, you know, AWS has like limited. The free tier or whatever. You know? yeah, I think there was. Was there one more? Is it a new requirement that if you give a presentation, you have to move? Yeah, that's right. And now <laughs> everyone who's whoever's next is done. You know, so. Yeah. Um, so I'll be here. You know, if anyone has questions afterwards, let me know. And uh, thanks for your time. Appreciate it.